follow that very closely. Also tonight, the liberal mainstream media is ignoring massive scandals and all kinds of positive news about the Trump administration, and instead they want to attack yours truly. So tonight, we're going to call out the liberal media's tangled, incestuous web. It's nothing full of corruption. It's full of corruption, conflict, and the partisan press has been screaming about transparency for the past 24 hours. They don't practice what they preach. It's a massive double standard. It reaches just about every single so-called news organization in the country. Now, also tonight, new evidence that the head of fake news CNN, Jeff Zucker, and his network have their sick, twisted porn obsession continuing. They cannot stop talking about the unverified so-called P-tape. And James Comey is claiming that he's never watched Hannity and talking about me. Really? We're going to cover all of that, so much more, in tonight's breaking news, opening monologue. All right, if you bothered watching the fake news media in the past 24 hours, which I do not recommend, you may have noticed they have a new obsession and a new target to feign their moral outrage at, and they have decided to hyperventilate and go wall to wall with hysterical coverage about me. Now, the media in this country has zero credibility. We have known this for over a decade. You know, we've been exposing the media for what they really are. They are frauds, they are partisan hacks, and frankly, nothing more than extension of the Democratic Party. All things liberal and pretty much all they do is parrot liberal political talking points and of course attack President Trump 24 7 all in an attempt to damage delegitimize his presidency so naturally when people dare to tell the truth about the president and his accomplishments and report on what is the biggest abuse of power scandal in American history yeah I'm not surprised I become a 24 7 target the media wants to tear this president down that's what they want they hate conservatism. They hate anybody that dares to challenge their rigid, radical, left-wing ideology. Now, all of this perfectly explains why they've been going so hard after me and just simply refuse to believe the truth that I told them. And by the way, it's not the first time they've done it to me and others, and it won't be the last. Now, thankfully, People are seeing what's happening. Other conservatives are calling out this massive double standard, this hypocrisy from the liberal media, and God knows these so-called journalists won't do it themselves. Earlier today, the king of talk radio, Rush Limbaugh, the great one, Mark Levin, both exposing what the liberal media is doing. Let's start with Rush. Here's what he said on his radio show earlier today. So let me tell you what this, uh, this, this, this so-called this attack on Sean Hannity is, what it really, really is. It is another in a long line, in a many years effort to destroy the credibility of advocates for conservative slash Republican or anti-Democrat issues and personalities. The purpose of this is, is not to put Hannity in legal jeopardy, although they would love to if they could, but the real purpose here is to simply discredit Hannity as a known, effective public advocate for Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the enemy. Donald Trump must be sent packing. Donald Trump must not politically survive. And the people who make effective cases for Trump are going to be hit and are going to be targeted. But there is so much glaring hypocrisy. It really frosts me that hypocrisy never sticks to these people on the left. They define collusion. They define conflict of interest. They are architects of deceit. They are never forthcoming about who they really are. And if you try to find out, if you try to do an investigative report on some of these people, they start squealing like stuck pigs that you can't because they're protected by the First Amendment. They are journalists and as such, they are never the story. So you can't talk about them. An amazing takedown by Rush, and he's right. The media cannot stand the fact that there are people like us that challenge the liberal partisan worldview. They hate that we want the country under President Trump to actually succeed and help the forgotten men and women that need jobs that are in poverty, uh, out of the labor force or on food stamps, that we believe in the Constitution, that we believe in equal justice under the law, equal application under the law. We support Reagan-style free market principles and a strong national defense. 
Now, the media also can't stomach that we expose the deep state and one of the biggest abuses of power in American history, which they have been ignoring despite mountains of evidence for months as they go with their unproven conspiracy theories. So I'm not surprised that the media is going after me. It's predictable. It's pathetic. Now, here's the truth. The media is guilty of every single solitary thing they have been accusing me of over the last 24 hours. The media is the sewer. They are the swamp. And there's part of this incestuous corruption and conflict, and they sure as heck don't want to talk about or care about transparency. Here's just a few examples why. Take a look at ABC News. George Stephanopoulos, the so-called journalist that secured the first interview with disgrace, former FBI Director James Comey, the guy who literally is carrying out a personal vendetta against President Trump. Now, did George Stephanopoulos ever disclose the fact that during the interview that he worked on Bill Clinton's 92 presidential campaign and was a communications director and then served in the Clinton White House as a senior advisor? Um, and since the liberal media appears to be suffering from amnesia, here's a clip from the documentary. It's called The War Room. Yeah, George Stephanopoulos advocating for the Clintons. Take a look. What is names and address? I can send you a fax with names, addresses, phone numbers of, of who you had an affair with. It wouldn't make it true. It is completely <laughs> If you went on the radio and said that Bill Clinton is uh, the father of an illegitimate black child, you would be laughed at. People would think you're crazy. I guarantee you that if you do this, you'll never work in democratic politics again. Maybe you don't want to. I'm not saying it matters. You will be embarrassed before the National Press Corps. People will think nobody will believe you, and people will think you're scummy. You'll be embarrassed. Never work in national politics again. Sounds like a threat. Did George Stephanopoulos reveal any of that before, during, and after the sit-down with Comey? Remind his audience? Or how about the fact that George donated 75 grand to the Clinton Foundation, which, of course, he didn't reveal to his viewers during an interview with Peter Schweitzer back in 2015? Stephanopoulos, he had to apologize after being exposed. But there wasn't wall-to-wall -wall coverage over that. And all of it explains why Stephanopoulos put on the kid gloves and didn't ask James Comey the tough questions. Now, one thing is just a fact. I am honest about who I am and what my political beliefs are. I am an unapologi unapologetic conservative. I am a Trump supporter. I support Reagan economic policies and peace through strength. For example, where was the follow-up question when Comey admitted he didn't tell Donald Trump that Hillary Clinton paid for the unverified dossier, which, by the way, was used to get a FISA warrant to spy on an American? Watch this. Did you tell him that the Steele dossier had been financed by his political opponents? No. I didn't, I didn't even think I used the term Steele dossier. I just talked about additional material. But did he have a right to know that? That it had been financed by his political opponents? I don't know the answer to that. It, I, it wasn't necessary for my goal, which is to alert him that we had this information. Oh, wait, George Stephanopoulos, he's a journalist, right? Well, why didn't he ask Comey to respond to the information in the Grassley-Graham memo that the bulk of the FISA application to spy on a Trump campaign associate consisted of the dossier that he didn't vet, that he had a legal obligation, an FBI protocol obligation to do? And why didn't Stephanopoulos ask if Comey lied to a FISA court and federal judges on four separate occasions by not revealing that the dossier was funded by Hillary Clinton and the DNC, whose finances she controlled? Why didn't Stephanopoulos ask Comey to respond to what his former deputy director, Andrew McCabe, said about the dossier? Without it, there never would have been a FISA application. And the list goes on. Now, Stephanopoulos, he lobbed up softball question after softball question, never challenged or pressed Comey. Why should he? He got the first interview. Why should he? He's friends with the Clintons. Then over there at Fake News CNN, you have Jake Tapper. Well, I'll just let the great one, Mark Levin, handle this part. Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper was a spokesman for uh, Marjorie Margolis Mazvinsky, who is a congresswoman or was from the 13th Congressional District of Pennsylvania. Uh, her son uh, married Chelsea Clinton. I mentioned that too. Does Jake Tapper ever mention that? No. Does Jake Tapper ever mention that he was a spokesman for Handgun Control, Inc.? No. Oh, so the fake news CNN, did they ever disclose all of this when he hosted CNN's gun control town hall a few months ago? And I wonder if Jake is going to disclose all of this on a show tomorrow. I doubt it. Now, none of this should be surprising. Now, according to the Center for Public Integrity, back during the campaign, 
96% of presidential campaign donations from journalists, they went to Hillary Clinton. You heard me right, 96%. Will all those people now come clean about their political contributions and their support for Hillary Clinton? Or what about, as WikiLeaks exposed, that top journalists from ABC, Bloomberg, CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, many of these outlets, remember they dined at a key Clinton staffer's house right before Hillary launched her campaign, ate their food, drank their wine? If all those journalists did in fact attend, why didn't they tell you about it? Or how about these relationships? Does the media find these problematic? You got reports, Virginia Mosley, a senior vice president at CNN, married to Thomas Nides, who served as the undersecretary of state for Hillary Clinton. We know Claire Shipman, reporter, ABC, married to former Obama White House press secretary, Jay Carney, former Obama national security advisor, Susan Rice, her husband used to work at ABC News. Does the media find any of this troubling? Um, this is only a small sampling of stuff I could bring up. Did they raise red flags about any of this? Then there is the epitome of the Washington, D.C. sewer and swamp, the dozens of journalists that went to work for the Obama administration. Media Research pointed out the total number reached as high as 30. It got so bad that back in 2013, even the liberal Washington Post was forced to cover it and ask this question. So what to make of all of the family ties between the news media and the Obama administration? Great question. The answer is nothing. No one in the media cared because their savior, the chosen one, Barack Obama, was president. But if a Fox News Channel contributor goes to work for the White House, God help us all. It was the highlight of these journalists' careers to suck up and defend Obama's disastrous record. They never vetted him, and they never told you how bad his achievements or lack thereof were eight years later. later the media doesn't care about truth anymore. They don't care about facts. They don't care about ethics. They don't care about holding themselves accountable. They have what is a clear, obvious liberal agenda, and they share a common goal with liberals in this country, the Democratic Party. They want to destroy the president. Now, we have showed you their reaction on election night. It was like a funeral. Their attacks against the president it is getting more unhinged every day. And for the media to pretend they have any sort of moral authority is just laughable. It's a joke, and you, the American people, know it. That's why poll after poll shows you don't believe them, and you don't trust them, and you see the bias for what it is. Now, we're going to end with this key point. Members of the media, they have put their blinders on and are purposely ignoring a massive scandal which would be the biggest story in their lifetimes. And if they care so much about conflicts of interest, like they claim, I dare them to report on this corrupt Mueller investigation and his team that are stacked full of Democratic donors. And Mueller's buddy with James Comey, when Comey had a friend leak potentially classified information to the media so that, that Mueller, in fact, would be appointed. And Mueller has assembled a team that has donated over 50 grand to Obama, Democrats, Hillary, and the DNC, gave no money to Donald Trump. And Mueller handpicks Andrew Weissman, who has the most atrocious track record, including withholding exculpatory evidence and convictions in the Enron accounting scandal overturned by the Supreme Court, 9-0. People went to jail. That was overturned by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals or Mueller's own involvement when he was in Boston. Four people went to jail. Two of them died in jail. They were all innocent. And over a $100 million judgment was paid out after the fact. Now, Congressman Mark Meadows is also revealing tonight that newly uncovered documents suggest a, quote, concerning level of coordination between the DOJ and the FBI during key moments of the Clinton email investigation, which we have talked about at length on this program. Or how about James Comey and Trump hating FBI agent Peter Strzok and all these other people putting the fix in on the Clinton email investigation? It's immediate. They don't even mention it. It's unbelievable how corrupt they are. If they cared about truth and journalism and about being fair and balanced and all of these things, they would be reporting these things to you every night. But in their sanctimony, they think they are holier than thou. All right, cry me a river. Joining us now 